Hi guys, welcome to another video from Overbyte Gaming, and today I want to have a bit of a talk video. And I, I want to talk about something that was a bit of a, bit of a staple in my late childhood or early adulthood. God, I'm on. Uh, but that is Blood Omen Legacy of Cain. Now, I have very fond memories of playing this on the PS1 when I, when I got it. I had my buddy Jason over and we were, we were playing that in... Uh, are we drinking beer? It's possible we were drinking beer, I'm not sure. Like I said, it was a long time ago. <laughs> but I just think this game gets forgotten about quite a lot and it's a fantastic game. I feel like a lot of its thunder was stolen by the spin-off series Soul Reaver. Uh, which was originally going to be shift and completely unrelated, but uh, never mind. So, Blood Omen is the first in the Legacy of Cain series of games, of which are this, the um, Soul Reaver 1 and 2, you've got uh, Defiance, uh, and Blood Omen 2, which I actually really like Blood Omen 2, it's very, uh, it, it's very linear, very uh, clunky, but I do like it. I, I, you can just be a complete arse. There's like bits where you, you take down a person and they're trying to crawl away and you're just like kicking them in the fucking arse as they're trying <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I find things like that funny. I'm pretty sure it's a fairly severe personality defect, but whatever. Anyway, we're talking about the first game in the series. As I said, it came on the PS1 in 96 and it had a PC conversion in 97. I had it on the PS1 at the time. Uh, the reason that I've been sort of prompted by this is because not only has it received a release on GOG.com now, uh, it is actually on there for the princely sum of $6.79. As you know, GOG price it all in American dollars, no matter where you buy it from. So uh, if you're in a place where the dollar is particularly weak against your native currency, then you are obviously getting a bit of a discount. So Legacy of Cain. It starts off with a flashback to the past, where the protectors of Nosgoth get taken out quite violently, and the leader of the Seraphan is basically cursed into an animate suit of armor for failing to protect them. And my sympathy is of limited uh, degree because of how the Seraphan are presented in later games. But flashing forward, we find uh, ourselves in the boots of Cain, a uh, nobleman, a bit of a as it was bit torn, of a dick, actually. He can be a bit of a sarcastic bastard, but uh, that's perfect because he's a, he's an anti-hero, voiced superbly oh, by Simon Templeton as well. I cannot imagine Kane with any with different it, voice. It has to be Simon. Uh, he's attempting to get a bed and a meal at an inn, but is being told they're closing up and he needs to bog off. So he does so and gets promptly attacked in the uh, forest outside of the inn and murdered. So, yeah, that's it, game over. No, of course it's not. Uh, in the afterlife, he's approached by a being called Moritanius, I believe his name is. So, so some of their pronunciations may get a bit... Uh, and basically he's offered a Faustian deal where he can come back and seek vengeance upon his murderers. And to do that, he is resurrected as a vampire. Now, this is one of those games which I think if it hadn't been as... I, I don't want to say, I would say adult rather than adult, you know, so we're not talking like flapping tits, but we're talking about adult the themes. The I, no uh, I think without that, it would be less popular. There's gore, there's obviously your vampires, so you do all the blood sucking and the magic and the changing of forms and all of this. And it's basically a top down, well, it's, it's kind of like 2.5D top down uh, game which bears similarities to Zelda in the fact that you have your attack button and you wander about from a similar angle. But certainly you have just an atmosphere to the game that is really uncommon for games of that time. It's nasty, it's brooding, it's really well done. The controls nowadays do come across as a little bit clunky if I'm honest. But uh, they were all you needed. You could you could absolutely play the game no problem with that control setup. It's not as fluid as like today's games, but when you think about like it was a PS1 back in like the mid 90s, yeah, you kind of got to give it a pass for that. 
Uh, certainly one of the things that brought me back to the game was discovering uh, a series of patches for it. Uh, which increased the frame rate to 60, so, you know, it entered my book of being playable at that point, and <laughs> And uh, fixed a load of other problems, increased compatibility with Xbox controllers, stuff like that. Uh, and basically I can run the game at 1440p. Obviously the graphics don't look 1440p, but uh, they aren't noticeably stretched or anything like that when filling out a full screen. So they do get a little bit sharper. So finding that patch, I will leave a link in the, descri uh, the description down below if you want to go check that out. Uh, certainly you can use the patch on either the GOG version or if you have the disc uh, of the game. I actually misread it at first and spent about an hour digging out my original PS1 disc only to realize that no, no they're talking about the PC version. A PC version I was kind of like unaware of at the time. Uh, I did have a PC back then but uh, I had no idea Legacy of Kane was on it. I thought it was a PlayStation exclusive for many many years. So I was wrong. So as Kane, you gain vampiric abilities. Uh, you unlock them slowly, you have to pick up cards and stuff like that to unlock. Your basic health gauge is a vial of blood, which refills when you drink blood, and Kane is not your standard vampire when it comes to slurping up the red stuff. Oh no, he doesn't go for the whole, I'm going to stick my teeth in you approach. No, 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 no. He will in fact hoover it in across the room. It will fly as a stream into his mouth and he'll be like, nom lovely stuff and that will refill your life gauge uh, you will, it will only fill up to like the top obviously if there's any more it has an animation of the blood sort of overflowing uh, there are vials you can pick up which will increase the length of your blood meter and they're the same for your magic meter as well as you have access to a number of spells you also have equipment you can pick up you have different armors that have different abilities and also you have weapons and the things called dark hearts which basically like lives in the game. And you have your trusty weapons of which there are a few including the legendary soul reaver itself the uh, two-handed flambeige I think it's that's I'm not once again pronunciations but blah of which you can make mincemeat of your foes and, and weakness are no for to what this game this does, call. because you, you don't just have that, you have, and send them back you can change into a werewolf came. form that can leap, you can change into mist, you can change into a bat to fast travel. What this game does, sort of back from 96, you can't look back into it. That's pretty impressive, all the while uh, maintaining a really interesting story full of twists and turns, and also you know, the, the adult nature of the tale. It's something that when I played it, I wasn't used to seeing on consoles. I mean, when you think about PlayStation, you th the first one, you think about Tekken and Wipeout and things like that. You don't think brooding dark RPGs. You, you just don't. <laughs> I mean, you had like Final Fantasy, but... These fools were merely you know, you're, you're racing your chickens, murder, not the cause. horse sized chickens, look to their Ch chocobos. Look to the so, no, I, I would not call that dark and adult. So, it was really nice to get something like this that. It's very hard fantasy. And place. you do have a couple of endings to the game, which the I won't elaborate on. One is characterized as the bad ending, and one is characterized as a good ending. And the bad ending is the canon one as it carries on into Blood Omen 2. I guess they would have had to do that, otherwise you'd need a new protagonist, which they did anyway to Razia. Uh The Soul Reaver games, I was never as much of a fan of. I'd respect them for what they did from a technical standpoint, but sort of when you you became like a wraith rather than a vampire, I was kind of like, ah, I, was kind of, I kind of want to be the vampire thing again. And then they blow up Blood Omen 2 and I got to play Kane and be a vampire again, so that was good. And then you have obviously Defiance as well, which is, I think it's called Defiance, I've got like two copies of it somewhere. Uh, but yeah, you, so you get to be both Kane and Raziel. So, I always prefer Kane over Raziel, I think I, having a scarf is a little bit Zoomerish. <laughs> no, of course not. But, the, the fact that they sort of instantly had a vampire and then decided, yeah, you're not a vampire anymore, we're going to take that off you, yeah, we're going to rip your wings off. And make you a wraith that just 
Suck souls, that's not as cool, man. Sorry. Not as cool, and it, obviously the game itself was a lot more platformer and puzzle game. With obviously combat elements no in it, but uh, that kind of put me off as well, as I am on record as saying I am not very good at platforming, and that game certainly is no exception to that role. But the first Legacy of Kane game is different from anything else they've done, because it obviously went 3D from there on in, and the overhead perspective probably brought about by uh, memory limitations on the PS1, to be honest with you. Uh, just gives it a different flavour. It's it's like going from uh, Castlevania 1 to Simon's Quest and being like, oh. <laughs> you like, I don't know I like this as much. Is it Castlevania? Yes, it is. The one where it goes to like to side view. Is this that? I don't know. I didn't, wasn't an Nintendo player back in the day, but I'm sure you know what I'm trying to say. That completely changing uh, the, the perspective while trying to keep the same game is questionable. I mean, certainly the uh, Legacy of Kane games did. I wouldn't say they improved because I think the first one is still the best, but they they did well enough for the style they were going for. The first one has a special place in my heart. Uh, Watching the cinematics, even to this day, I mean, they look, you know, we're not talking like Blizzard level cinematics at all, but they give me a little happy from a nostalgia standpoint. And with this new patch, they're a little bit better looking as well. So I would highly recommend checking it out if you haven't. Uh, it's not an easy game. Uh, there are a few times where I got totally bamboozled as to what to do back in the day. Uh, nowadays, you just look up a walkthrough. Back then, 96. I can't even remember if I had internet at that point. I know it was a long old struggle because Dad just assumed I wanted access to the bottom database. He wasn't entirely wrong, but there were other reasons for it as well. So I was going for my struggle of getting internet access because it was all dial up at that point. And he was worried about the phone bill as well, so I had to have the phone line put in and basically assigned to me. So I, they didn't have to pay any bills I incurred. Uh, but yeah, all was it and well, we, we got it. So yeah. But yeah, at the time it was like if I didn't have a clue book, I actually have a PlayStation 1 clue book. Maybe that, that's something I should uh, consider like going through at some point just to like look back and say oh look Lo Lone Soldier that was an amazing game back in the day look I have cheats for it <laughs> oh dear I, I must really I've still got like tons of PlayStation 1 games I don't throw out games or anything like that uh, unless I've the only time I really do that is if I've got a better version of them so I've replaced them then I might sell them on eBay or something along those lines but I, I keep them I, I like having them around to go back to uh, because nine times out of ten as soon as you give or sell something and you can't play it anymore I guarantee you within days you are wanting to play that bastard again it happened so often yeah, I was just like, screw it, I keep everything, I fill out my collection, I still buy older games nowadays, I mean, I buy older consoles, I mean, I've, I've bought an N64 and a, a GameCube in the last year, so I really like going back to sort of the older ones, and I mean, particularly in Nintendo's case, uh, seeing what I missed out, because I never had a GameCube back in the day, and like, missed out on Rogue Leader, and um, Eternal Darkness, and all of that, and I'm getting to play that now, and even though they're old, I'm still enjoying it, although Rogue Leader is fucking difficult. I must say. <laughs> you do have a... You do have a tendency of not knowing where to fucking go and then all of a sudden the mission failing because you weren't where you were supposed to be. But yes, anyway, Legacy of Cain. Good game. It's under $7 on GOG. Go check it out. I'll leave the link uh, to the patch that uh, made me aware of it in the description below so you can go and find that and apply that it's These completely free you just download it and uh, it has an option for an installer if you've got a disk and if you use the GOG version then you can just overwrite the files and extract it and it works great and I've had no problems with it 60 frames a second 1440p it's lovely 
and I highly recommend it all. One thing I haven't mentioned about the uh, gameplay is, is just how good it felt when you got the new forms, like when you got the wolf or the mist or, um, you know, and the powers like being able to control mines and stuff like that. It was just, it all felt really well tied together within Vampire Mythos and in this new fantasy world of Nosgoth, which in itself was interesting, but then I have a fabulous vampire lore to go with it. I mean, it was just great. Highly recommend it. Check it out because I'm repeating myself. So I'll stop the video now. Go have fun. And let me know down below if you've played Legacy of Blood Omen Legacy of Cain. Let's get that to name right because uh, that would be criminal if I don't. Uh, down below. And uh, also let me know what was your favorite of the series. And let's include the Soul Reaver games, yeah? Let me know what one you like best. Totally good. Easy guys. I'll catch you next week.